All right, my next guest is the most influential and without question the richest motivational speaker in the world. Please welcome my biggest late night competition next to the salad master, Tony Robbins. You're a huge, giant man with giant hands. Am I lying? I don't know if you can tell on TV. I'm over eight feet tall. Yes, I know. <laughs> you stand next to me. You're over if you nine and a half or ten feet tall. Yeah, exactly. And look at those hands. My hand just went away. You got when some you're... huge hands yourself. That... Well, no, you don't. <laughs> no, they just go away. <laughs> I could take you. Take me down. <laughs> Now, there's so much to talk about here. First of all, you, you've helped a lot of people uh, in your lifetime. Uh, I'm imagining thousands of people have, have benefited from your motivational speaking. You must be running into grateful people all the time. Is that true? It's actually the greatest part of my life. Every day I get stopped by somebody. And the stories are so varied. You'll hear somebody say, I met a guy the other day, probably the more emotional one, saying that he was literally crippled. The doctor said that no surgery would help him, and he stayed that way for six months, and then he read one of my books and decided not to give up, and now he's walking. He's very emotional, crying. And we have a dog that could have helped him. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was one of the... Uh... What was one of the stranger uh, ones, that people that who was thankful? What's uh, it was probably one of the most bizarre was uh, many years ago, the uh, NBA All-Star Game, they asked me if I would MC a party for Michael Jordan, a group of people, but they failed to mention it was for 5,000 people. So I was at the door meeting everybody, and I love to meet people. When I get stopped in the street, I always connect with people and hear their stories. But after about 4,000 people, I was getting burned out. And I thought I heard every story you can imagine. And all of a sudden, this guy, about four people back, started jumping up and down and going, oh my God, and he started using this colorful F word and saying, it's Tony Bleepin' Rock. Robbins. I can't bleep and believe it. Awaken a bleeping giant within. Hey, man, you made me bleeping rich. You made me bleeping rich. And I was like, calm down. How you doing? I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a pimp. <laughs> and I said, I thought he was joking, right? He turned, thing, he he turned things around for that guy. I, joking. I looked at him. He goes, no, check out my bitches. Here they are. And he said, I owe you a favor. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah. What do you mean, no, no, no. <laughs> now wait, so you, so did, did you ever, have you looked back at the tapes, have you ever told people, you know, if you're down and out, you know, start turning out hoes, I'm telling you. Do you ever, is there a night where you ever... No, I haven't gotten that low yet. Now, uh, you have a lot of famous people call you, uh, in the, and, and they call you for positive motivation or to feel up when they're down. Who's, what's like the most famous person recently that... Who's well, called it you. isn't really motivation, honestly. People see the seminars I do are more, you've got 20,000 people and you see all this energy because I think you've got to entertain people and have right. fun. But, you know, when Clinton called the first time, it was a very big surprise. President Clinton. President Clinton. Calls you. Yes. And what did, what, what's he say? What does he want? How did the um, conversation he go? He was the lowest polls he'd ever been. And um, he called up and said he wanted to meet me at Camp David. And I said, I'm really honored for the offer. I said, but I'm not a fan. And you just need to know that before I come. And my... After I hung up the phone, my buddy said, you just told the president you're not a fan, you know? Yeah, wait a minute, you were, you were nicer this. to the pimp. <laughs> <laughs> like the pimp, you're like, yeah, well, great, huh? <laughs> huh, President Clinton? Uh, yeah. actually, also, actually, Michael Jackson, years ago when he was doing Thriller, he called up at my house. He got my house number from uh, somebody else who was a client of mine. I didn't realize he'd used my stuff, and he called up, and my secretary, sitting at the house, answered the phone, and he said, hello, is Tony there? This is Michael Jackson. And she said, shut up, John, and she hung up the phone. <laughs> He had to call back twice to get through, so it was interesting. So I had a lot of variety of people, but I really love just the people I meet every single day that are making changes in their life using some of these tools. Now, what's like the biggest surprise call, like call just out of nowhere? That, that Tyson after the ear incident, you know, and how to, how to manage himself. After the ear incident, yes. Mike Tyson gets on the phone and calls you up. Actually, someone else called me. And, said and then they hand the phone to him. Was he still like chewing away? You know? <laughs> Uh, what am I gonna do here? I'm Better than chicken. <laughs> uh, that is so odd. You these are such these are such bizarre calls to get. You've got to yeah. secretly tape them and play them on this late night show, don't you think? Um, now and ruin your own business. Yes, exactly. Uh, you, uh, I'm fascinated because I'm, I'm reading up on you. I'm studying. And you own your own island. Yeah, that's some. Which very, very you own your own island. That's like well, that's that's like that's like one of the categories of insanity. You, uh, <laughs> Bond villains always have their own island. <laughs> you will never escape, Mr. Bond. 
Have you ever thought of like waging a one-man war against the government, trying to control the weather? No, no, no. no always. Do you have secret agents in your hollowed-out volcano? I mean, what, what? Tell us about that. You having a one-man island? That's that's crazy. Well, it's not a one-man island is actually. <laughs> Yeah, I go there and motivate myself. Well, you have guys there in jumpsuits and machine guns, I'm sure, too, on patrol for anyone trying no, to escape. No, I just, I, you know, I've always loved the idea of that. I grew up very poor, and when mm -hmm. I was able to do well, I wanted to share that with my family. I wanted a place that if all heck broke loose, my family have a great place to be. And we were there when the riots broke out in L.A., so it was a good place to be. So were you so watching on a giant good. TV from your volcano? <laughs> <laughs> the fools. <laughs> Prepare my copter. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, it's a resort. It's one of the top three resorts in the country of Fiji. There's 300 islands there. I don't go okay. there by myself. No, okay, all right, all right. All right, I just I never get to talk to people that have their own island. I don't have my own island. I want my own island. Now, uh, your show runs opposite... I think this is nice that we have a, a meeting of the minds here because your show runs opposite this show on, on some stations. Yeah, we usually kick your ass. <laughs> Actually, the fun part for me is... Pity to have to destroy your island, Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, this is going to be Andy and I swimming up to your island in frogman suits at night. <laughs> right. With a free breather down and, Yeah, and attacking you. That's right. Don't kick our ass. Oh, no, my favorite this part is... This is the people... biggest show in America, people... this show. <laughs> it is. It's just the biggest show. Sorry. I'm here. All right, it's just here. More, more people just saw Matthew Perry on this show than on Friends. That's how good this show is going. And don't look into that to try and prove whether it's true or not. Because it's not worth your time. No, uh, the fun part, though, is people will stop me on the street all the time. People treat you like you're a celebrity when you got an infomercial. It's silly. And they'll come up and say, oh, my God, I watch your show every Thursday. And I go, it's a commercial. <laughs> if you notice, the guests don't change. But people get all excited when you're on television. <laughs> Me and, the, me and the spray on hair, you know? All right, well, you're going to be getting a late night call from me when I get into some kind of jam, uh, which will be any day now, I hope. Visit uh, your website, uh, dreamlife.com. And uh, Tony, a fun guest. Really Thank nice you having much. you on Very the nice show. Tony Robbins, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs>